What type of a, a, a uterine cancer do you have? It's an extremely rare form of uterine cancer called endometrial stromal sarcoma. There's about 100 cases reported worldwide each year. And again, no family history of uterine cancer. I'm an old Parker resident. My son uh, successfully operated on for a sarcoma five years ago. Uh, but I also have another question. Um, how feasible is it to clean this thing up without making a horrendous mess? Is it feasible to do it if we have money to do it? And what about the areas that are downstream that are contaminated? Uh, the answer is yes, and if we can, we're going to talk more about that after the second presentation of the evening. We'll be talking more about the cleanup in, in particular. Other questions now or comments regarding the embassy investigation are for these community members? My name is Robert Hasley. I came from Kaiser per Permanente this afternoon. I have lymphomic cancer and uh, B cell briquettes, okay, fast growing. I'm out of remission. My parents both had cancer. We came to this community in 1964, okay. My wife has a thyroid problem. I think that's just pretty sad. We lived down in 1964 in a place called Ten Oaks Trailer Court, right on Los Angeles Avenue, line of sight of what would be the hill. And uh, we showered, drank, and bathed in water from the well right off of Los Angeles Avenue. So when I read reports that say, well, it just hit the, you know, the Simi Arroyo and it carried itself out, what about the stuff that was airborne? What about the guys on the hill that I knew that said, when you see a red cloud, uh, as a gas release, you want to run the other way because it's going to kill you. You know, these people have the information. And what is the cost of technology and the space race? Is it a cost also in people? And I think we already know what the answer is. Okay, um, a gentleman here with a red shirt. Oh, you got the mic, all right. Yes. My name is Bill Kent. I've lived in the Santa Susana uh, uh, area for 30 years. I've had cancer. My neighbors have all had cancer. And we've been battered back and forth for years and years about who's going to clean it up, who's responsible, what's going to happen. This is all nonsense to cover up perhaps the biggest potential class action suit in the history. I mean, what is the liability for all the deaths and the, the suffering and God knows the property values and now and potentially? I think this needs to be looked into. I think if you'll remember Santa Susana meltdown at Gmail, anybody who's interested in pursuing class action, uh, should put their, their email and their name uh, on that at, at that location, and maybe we can do something that will make a difference. The woman with the mask. Hi, my name is Jeannie Perlstad, and I lived up in Wolsey Canyon at the Summit Home Home Park. I bought a mobile home after I retired from the Postal Service in 97. I was thrilled to have like my own little yard, so, and I love to hand weave without gloves. And so I was out in the dirt every day. Um, my golden retriever, he developed cancer on his feet. The fur turned a reddish color brown. Um, my mother, she died in 2007 of myelodysplastic syndrome, which is what they kind of call the pre-leukemia, but it can affect all, infect whatever, affect all three cell lineages, white, red, and platelets. Um, 
I have MDS now. It started off as with low platelets. My doctor had my bone marrow uh, biopsies were pretty strange. He ended up sending me to the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. And um, they did some, I had the top doctor, but I get no, I have no treatment. My platelets are at a very dangerous level, 18,000, um, which means because my platelets are the line, that is what's mostly bothered. My mom had to get weekly transfusions. And um, it's a stupid thing because it's like, I don't dare hit my head because I will brain bleed. And I spontaneously bruise constantly. And um, my mom, baby dad, they bought a mobile home in 1980 in Canoga Park, right over by the DeSoto facility. And I used to hang out over there all the time. So it was pretty weird at about the same time, my mother and I both at the same time ended up having bone marrow problem failure. And I have said to them at the National Institute of Health, I told them about the Santa Susana Field Lab. I told the doctor at UCLA about the Santa Susana Field Lab. So I know that it's notated somewhere, but I truly believe that this is what happened. So. Thank you. Hi, my name is Fabian. Um, my voice is hoarse right now because I'm prepping for radiation treatment. I had a total thyroidectomy uh, a month ago. Um, I had been told from various doctors, oh, it probably runs on your mom's side of the family. Um, my mom has had thyroid problems. They're still trying to figure out what's going on with her, but that doesn't explain the only other member in my family, which is on a different side of the family, we've all lived within seven miles our entire lives of Rocketdyne. And my cousin had early 20s, three different types of cancers um, in her thyroid, all thyroid related. Um, her doctor said without a doubt, she was exposed before the age of five to massive amounts of radiation. She lived in West Hills, right next to the lovely homes that are being built there that everyone should live in. Um, and it's, it's kind of like this thing that, oh, yeah, everybody gets cancer now. One in three women, blah, 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 blah. Um, there's just, there's too much going on in this area to just shrug it off as that. Um, I mean, if anybody it follows the, there's a Facebook page out there, it's the secrets of Rocketdyne or whatever. There's a guy doing a documentary. He had this Trudy's map on there. And you go up and you look at Trudy's map and I go, oh my gosh, I'm living right in the middle of one of the biggest cancer clusters in Simi Valley. That's, I don't know, that's staggering evidence to me. Um, but I just wanted to speak out and say thank you to everybody who has taking part in this and bringing it to the surface. Um, I think it's something to be said. And my last nuclear medicine appointment, I spoke to my nuclear medicine doctor about it. And he said that Kaiser Woodland Hills, it has the largest cancer rate of any other Kaiser facility, hands down. And he believes it has exactly to do with the other area. So. Thank you. I also am a Kaiser patient, and that's where I've been going, and I have been told the same thing. That the clusters of Simi Valley and the amount of can the cancers they have seen at just the Woodland Hills facility is staggering. So the doctors know that something's happened. Thank you. Uh, okay, the gentleman with the hat has had his hand up. <laughs> and her best friend had uh, both passed away within the last few years. They were diagnosed with um, not as rare as these cancers, but both had cancers uh, diagnosed within about a month of each other. And they had grown up, um, I think it's North Hollywood, but along the wash where the LA River runs through. 
Um, and I've noticed a number of times that when we get rain here in Simi over the hills, that it's going to run off through the LA River, which goes down the five corridor and then around out to the ocean. And my question is uh, whether people have adequately looked at um, that corridor, it, if the prevalence is really higher statistically along the river, I, I would expect it to be. But that's it. Did, have any of you tracked a little farther out? Does it get around to the five and the west side? Um, when it rains, should we not surf for a week? Or I, mean, I, I don't want to be funny about it, but I, I mean, this is a, a health issue. So. I think a gentleman by the name of William Bowling, he used to have the Aerospace Cancer Museum of Education in Box Canyon for a couple of years. He did a lot of research on um, tracking where the contamination was going to end up. He's the one who found out that there was contamination from rocketine was going through the field at Moore Park High School. Right. Um, so, oh, there you are. Am I correct? This gentleman right here can answer probably any questions anybody has. He's great. I'm sorry, I don't need to. Hi, as far as the um, contamination through uh, the rivers and the pathway, um, there needs to be uh, more off-site uh, investigation and studies of uh, where it goes. And, the uh, Santa Santa Field Lab is the headwaters of the LA River, yes. And it depends on how far these contaminants can migrate. Um, from what the research that I've done, I suspect that it would uh, probably stay around the Sepulveda Basin, and then, because uh, that's where uh, the spreading grounds are for some of uh, the groundwater recharges. And then the uh, LA River over by the Five Freeway is fed by the Tahunga Wash. It's a 13 mile tributary that starts in the, the Verdugo Mountains up there, Haynes Canyon and whatnot. And then uh, there is a Superfund site of uh, trichloroethylene groundwater. The entire city of Burbank underneath there has uh, contaminated groundwater. So there could be other sources, um, not, not exactly the Santa Susana Field Lab, but uh, there is there just needs to be off, off, more off-site testing to find out. Um, the Santa Susana Field Lab also is the headwaters to the Arroyo Simi, and the Arroyo Simi uh, goes down behind Moore Park High School, and currently Aaron Brockovich is investigating uh, the cancers at Moore Park High School. So you have the Santa Susana Field Lab at about 2,000 feet above sea level, and then Simi Valley 800 feet above sea level, Moore Park about 500 feet above sea level. So it's all going that way, and um, it's, we just need more off-site investigations to to find out if this is uh, factual or not. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. So, okay. so the obvious question. I have a, I have the mic here. Well, I can't see you. I have it right okay. Here. <laughs> I just the obvious question then would be Erin Brockovich. Did you just say her name? Why shouldn't someone like that be leading the investigation, leading the charge? Is it, isn't there enough information? There, there's plenty of information. There are, are studies that have been conducted on off-site migration and on off-site uh, cancers near the site, as was presented in the NBC investigation. There are community members here, and there are um, advocates here, such as myself, and many other people who have been working on the cleanup. Um, you know, what we, what we know, we know what's on the hill, we know the effects that it has on people, the health impacts of those chemicals and radionuclides. We know it gets off the hill. We need the site cleaned up. That's the, that's the bottom line. Is the contamination needs to be cleaned up. And, and we're going to talk more about that uh, in detail because there's some new information out that I think people really want to stay for. What, what I'm referring to is the drive to get Boeing, Rocketdyne, and all the people responsible to pay for this. So you need, a, you'll need someone to lead the charge. There's a, there's a saying in, a, in, in many movements, which is um, unfortunate but true, but also empowering, which is that we are the ones we've been waiting for. And I think that's what, that's what we're going to have to do right. here. You do, you, do, you do need a leader, though. Yeah. 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 We're, we're going to talk more about that uh, at the second portion of the meeting, so stay, stay with us. Another question. Oh, uh, whoops, I'm being called. Over here, uh, Bonnie Klee. Um, in talking about Kaiser, um, I'm a cancer survivor, and 
my doctors at West Hills Hospital said they have a large increases in brain cancer, lung cancer among young people who were never smokers, and breast cancer. Thank you. Okay, over here. Yes, my name is Carol DeMars and my daughter Fabienne was over there and she's correct. She just had the surgery for her cancer, the thyroid, and it has run in members of the family who lived in West Hills, um, on both sides of the family now, including myself, possibly. Uh, the question I have, though, aside from everyone I know in West Hills who has cancer, is back in 1994, I, w I was a school teacher at the time, but I was home through the first week of January because I taught at an Armenian school and they don't go back till after the 6th. And that week was the worst explosion I have ever heard and felt from rocket dying. And we've lived in the Val in Canoga Park since 1948, or West Hills or Woodland Hills. And um, literally the windows on our house near El Camino High School shook. And I immediately placed calls to both congressional offices for CME and for that part of San Fernando Valley. And they each referred me to the other congressional office. And then I had to go back to school and then the North Ridge quake hit. And from that point on, our house was wrecked and I never got back to the 1994 explosion. But I've never been able to see any record of it or any knowledge about it. But all I can say is it was huge. Okay. So if someone wants to investigate that, that would be nice. Okay. No, it was 1994 because it was the week before the Northridge quake. Okay. I, I, uh, uh, Bill, did you want to say, we're going to go back to Bill Bowling for a minute. They're going to take another uh, question on this. This is called ground truthing. There, there was an explosion at the field lab in the 1990s and it killed uh, two scientists and uh, injured one other. And uh, the Rockwell Corporation uh, was fined $6 million for uh, disposing hazardous waste illegally. They were uh, burning some waste and uh, they put some concoctions together and uh, blew themselves up. So that did happen and it's uh, documented. Uh, you could go to my website, it's acmela.org. And on the very front page, there is an article you can click on with California Lawyer Magazine that discusses that incident. Okay, uh, one more, uh, and then we stay because we're going to have a talk about the health studies, and then we're going to talk about some very new and very important and very serious information and what we can do about it. Uh, and we'll, we'll have more questions in the later part of the program. Please. Hi, my name is Katie Falconer, and I was diagnosed two years ago with a very aggressive breast cancer at the age of 33. Um, went into my lymph nodes. I grew up in Simi Valley and moved here in 1987. It's always been on the east end, and now I'm a home owner on the east end as well. And my question is, we all have these stories, it sounds like. I know also with HIPAA violations, I'm a nurse as well, and I know that you can't go around and ask people their medical history, but is there a way that we can have a big website maybe voluntarily say how many people have been, you know, really affected by this personally, um, so that we have tr real numbers. I, I think so. There's a couple different uh, movements that are happening right now, and I'll, I'll give you my card and tell you about one of them, because I think that when people, um, a lot of people like to stay home and work behind their computers and gather information. We do have studies that are done. We're going to talk about those. But I think that that sort of, again, ground truth thing is also really important. So I want to thank very much our um, community members here.